Hello and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And we've got another show for you this week. Uh, a lot of information came to us since our last show and we definitely have to present it. And um, I think what we're going to start with is uh, the fire department. Um, got a little letter, copy of a letter in the mail. I'm going to block off the council's name should you be able to see it, but you see the city seal and it's signed by the mayor. And it says specifically what the mayor asked for in the SAFER grant and how he calculated it. Um, and he states that the current fiscal budget for fiscal year 2015 will only support a complement of 153 people. That he's contacted the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to, to explain the dilemma and we will be requesting additional funding to retain a total of 50 firefighters rather than the original request of 3,226,928 to retain 16 firefighters. So let's get into this a little bit. 3,226,000 $226,928 dollars for 16 firefighters. Remember these are entry level firefighters. That comes down to $201,683 dollars per firefighter per two year period, which breaks down to $100,841.50. Interesting amount of money when you consider the fact that uh, the average entry level firefighter is currently making about $38,000. Blue Cross Blue Shield on the family plan is $1,412.40 for the city to pay uh, times 12 months gives you $16,948.80 and top off extra pay you know for college degrees trainings etc cetera, etc cetera, top and we're, we're overestimating this would be $15,000 would give you a total salary cost for the city of $69,948.80 a difference of $30,892.70. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you multiply that $30,892.70 by the 16 firefighters, you would actually get enough firefighters for seven more, which would give us 23 under the SAFER grant. This is how numbers can lie. When you overestimate the salaries and whatnot, you get extra cash to play with. So at 50 firefighters, at the 100, 840, 150 that he's asking for, he has gone from a $3.2 million, $3 million grant to a $10.8 million grant. Do you really think the city is going to, going to get that much money from the federal government this late in the game after not paying attention to what the city had been told at the previous SAFER grant of get your house in order? The mayor in his letter further stated and we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, okay, that they would have a plan in place to solve their financial problems. And some of those was to, to take potential cost-saving steps, such as a home rule petition for early retirement. He did that. It failed. Implementation of a reorganization plan to ensure adequate response times. Okay, it's already been proven that 153 firefighters, you can have an adequate response time but nothing else. And then finally, consideration of the GIC health care plan. So he did that. He considered it. A lot of considerations, a lot of ifs, a lot of maybes. Um, is this how we do budgeting? I mean, I mean, I, I don't understand this. I, I'm, I'm kind of confused, Chip. Can you help me here? Because you're, you're, you're an expert with this type of stuff. And I mean, I'm totally lost. Well, they've got me a little confused, too, because when I negotiated contracts with the city, and I asked for any benefit, I had to give them the, of the cost of that benefit to the penny. Uh, and all these grant re requests should be down to the final penny. The other thing that disturbs me about this letter is that he says he was, one of the uh, ways he was going to look at keeping firefighters on a job was the consideration of the GIC. Yet he went on record saying and telling the firefighters that Regardless of how much money was realized from the GIC, that wouldn't add one more firefighter to the department. So, you know, the problem I'm having here is that, number one, a $10 million grant is impossible. We just received a $14 million. We received two back-to-back -back grants that were in excess of $12 million. So there's no way the feds are going to keep subsidizing us as one of the highest uh, safer grants in the country forever. And anybody who thinks that is, is 
maybe has to submit to a urine test. <laughs> but the fact that beyond that, uh, what disturbs me is when we get uh, incorrect figures and we also get uh, an incorrect portrayal of the condition and what's going to be done. I don't believe a real reorganization ever took place. It was just how are we going to how are we going to respond to fires with 153 men, and that's all it was done. It wasn't a true reorganization. The GIC again was a way to, for the city to get more money, but not to be used for what was specified by the city in the grant request. I think there are a lot of misleading uh, and 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 erroneous contentions. Uh, in this and realistically you know it speaks to our financial team again and you know the reality is when it comes to public safety we should have everything to the penny we should know what it's going to cost us we should be trying to maximize the number of firefighters on the job not try to uh, fly by the seat of our pants and have ballpark figures well you know I'll have to look into that and I'll bring the answer to the next show okay <laughs> You have to admit, that is funny. Yeah. Um, that seems that's the answer we get to from the financial team all the time. But, you know, you have to ask your elected officials, what is this crap? Okay? Um, outside of our studios, we have a big bull. And believe me, <laughs> that's what we're getting in this city, a lot of bull. And we need to know why. We need to ask why, you know? And um, I've gotten into some very interesting conversations regarding the show since our last show online and elsewhere and you know people keep saying we wanna we like what you're doing we really love the show can you throw in a nice nice piece of nice news and we're gonna try to do that for you but let us know what's going on and maybe we can present it here um, the next big issue that we have coming before us is the casino and you know it's gonna be very interesting because I got several documents here one comes from a state representative which went to the Gaming Commission and several state senators and uh, state representatives signed on to this report. And I could not bring the hard copy with me, but amazingly enough, I have the mystical and magical um, cell phone, or smartphone as they call it. And um, the state representative's name was Carolyn C. Dyker, or Dykema, Dykema, and she's from the 8th Middlesex District. And she presented several major issues to the Gaming Commission. One was that Foxwoods and Crossroads, Massachusetts, and its sub-entities all have a pattern of ambivalence towards criminal activity and corruption. And to really shorten that down, the chairman of Foxwoods, Management Council was federally convicted in a ju July 20, 2013 case where he embezzled $100,000 from Foxwoods. And the tribe never asked for it back. And then their treasurer decided, well, if he can do it, so can I. And he proceeded to embezzle $700,000. And he never paid it back. So, I have to ask myself, is this what we want? Now, the current CEO of Warner Gaming, which, as we follow this along, you will find out who Warner Gaming is in a, se in a second, previously served in a senior management at the Station Casinos, which was in Missouri. And after his fiasco with the Gaming Commission there, they had to pay a $1 million fine and were barred from g gambling in the state of Missouri. And these are people that are involved in this deal. A history of poor fiscal management and the inability to meet financial obligations, which we talked about on the previous show, but $2.3 billion just pissed away. Okay? And according to Standard & Poor's, Foxwood's credit rating is triple C. Triple C plus which means they're likely to default on their loans and not pay their obligations. A history of challenging financial commitments to, guess now listen carefully, partner communities. Oh no, 
That would make Fall River a partner community. And for the past seven years, Foxwoods, Foxwoods, Connecticut has challenged the towns of Ledger's ability to collect taxes on business assets and continues to challenge the town's rights in court to, despite multiple court rulings in the town's favor, they're not going to pay their taxes. $300,000 in unpaid taxes. Wait, gets better. Guess what else they don't honor? Can you take a shot in the dock, Chip? Take a, just a shot in the dock what they don't honor. They're, I don't know. I just their host everything. agreements. Their host agreements. Their host agreements. Isn't this amazing? Well, we don't have to worry about that, CJ, because we have our law department and 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 Kenny Fiola drawing it up. I know it's amazing. Now you want to know who Massachusetts Crossroads Massachusetts LLC and Foxwoods is? They're a, a multitude of companies. Two thousand one A and A Trust, Ajax, Ajax Gaming. Etkin, Massachusetts Gaming, Five Trees LLLP, RMP Massachusetts Gaming, Warner Gaming LLC, Warner Gaming Trust, Warner Gaming Massachusetts LLC, and White River Gaming. This is just the name of the, of the companies that are involved in this. So I don't see Foxwoods anywhere in there, do you? I, I mean, I can't hear that. But 13 individual qualifiers associated with them Unbelievable, some of the names. I'm not going to go into reading them, but this here alone is a 20 page court document asking for a mandamus judgment against Foxwoods and Crossroads, Massachusetts LLC. This is from the town of Hopkinton. Another 20 page document about questions and answers asked of the applicants for a license, Massachusetts Crossroads LLC. And again, the same issues. They don't honor their host agreements, they don't honor their bills, they're a high credit risk, and Massachusetts Gaming and the people of Milford saw through it and they voted no, and the people of Massachusetts are gonna be next, a forward of Massachusetts is gonna be next to vote yes or no on this. If they're not gonna honor their commitments in the past, are they going to do it now? Can we learn from history for the first time in Fall River? Can we really? And I mean, I'm presenting this to you because it's factual. These documents are available. I'll be more than happy to mail you a copy. I'll be more than happy to send them to you via email. These are available, and these are factual. This isn't that we're against you. This is factual. Right now, the city of Fall River is doing business or attempting to do business with a uncreditworthy corporation and a company which has lawsuits against it to pay their bills. Chip? Well, uh, as we said, I think, on a previous program, um, the casino uh, issue has to be discussed thoroughly and all questions have to be answered. The questions that, are, that have been raised by, uh, by these documents are obviously extremely important. What good is the casino if it, if it, won't, if it won't abide by its host agreement? Uh, what good is it if, if that we're going to be in court against them to try to get what we deserve? These questions all need to be answered. I'm sure that Foxwoods will now counter and say, we've reorganized, we are, you know, our financial picture is looking better. But as you said, it's not so much your financial picture. I mean, let's face it, uh, uh, Donald Trump went bankrupt a few times. And uh, he's, he's back, he's a multi-billionaire. These industries sometimes, they, you know, he reorganized. But that's not the issue. The issue here is if we're going to build a casino here, we have, to, we have to be the people who garner the benefit from that casino. It will be totally, it'll be totally counterproductive for us to build a casino here if we are not going to get the maximum benefit from that casino. If they are not going to honor their agreements, which again goes back to what we said here more than once, time and time again. We need to discuss this thoroughly in public and we need answers to all these questions and concerns to make, a, to make an accurate vote and make an informed decision on how to vote on, a, on casino gambling. Because the fact is, casino gambling makes money, but it makes a lot of money, but it's also, we have to put everything in perspective for the people. This is not a destination, this is not a destination casino. 
Las Vegas is a destination. You can go to the Hoover Dam, you can go to you can go to the Grand Canyon, you can go to Zion National Park, you can walk around and see pyramids. But places like Foxwoods are stuck in the middle of the woods. You know, they're places you go to basically gamble. They're not really they're not vacations. People go to Las Vegas to go on vacation. They've got beautiful weather, they've got swimming pools, they've got uh, virtually no rain, they're in a desert. And you know, that's the difference. The difference is we have to be accurate. I think that Plainville Slot Parlor, that's, been, that's gonna be opening, I think that Twin Rivers projected a $422 million loss because of that slot parlor. That shows how competitive this type of gaming is. It doesn't draw people like Vegas. It draws people, they gamble, and they, people always gamble in the most convenient place. So we have to look at all these things. We have to ask these questions. We have to be, and number one, we have to be sure, 100% sure, that that agreement is ironclad and impossible to, to ignore in court or any other place and th that this that this company will honor its obligation to the city you know that's that's the big problem we have though i mean this is a commercial casino that's what we're being told over and over and over again but many of the principals in this deal are members of the mashantucket pequot tribe and therefore they are immune from prosecution or from conviction or court cases in the United States and in Massachusetts. You have to try them in their tribal courts. And of course you know they're always found not guilty there. <laughs> so we have to be very careful what we're doing. And, and I, I think the other thing we have to be very careful about is the fact that right after this public information hearing, um, and it wasn't a hearing, it was a public information session. I spoke with somebody today and yesterday from the Massachusetts Gaming Commission and they said, what was held was a informational meeting. Nothing more, nothing less. So we give you credit. It's an informational meeting. Uh, they said initially $750 million. Am I mistaken there? I don't think so. But all of a sudden it went to $500 million. And from 20 restaurants to 10. And now maybe we won't get the hotel. And we don't know if we've got enough parking. And how are we going to handle this? And are they going to pay for this? Are they going to pay for the school? Are they not going to pay for the school? Are they going to pay to protect the school? You know, all these things are way up in the air. And then you've got these big, grandiose eyes out there, as I call them, the eye in the, you know, their eyes in the skies and their heads in a, you know, chocolate cream pie somewhere. And they're saying, well, what we need to ask Foxwoods for is money for our school system and money for our parks and you know, money for, for this and money to go into a fund to reduce our taxes. You know, Foxwoods is a business. They're going to try to get out of this as cheap as they can. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to be nice and sweet and they're going to come along and say, la di da di da here you go, here's the money you want, you're all set, let us build. I don't think so. That would be foolish. But it's real difficult for, for a lot of people to understand because I get chat, you know, yelled and chopped at all the time about the fact that you're speaking against the casino. I'm not speaking against the casino. I am presenting facts. I am neither for nor against. I'm presenting facts. Do we need jobs? Sure we need jobs. So does everyone else. Do we need a bigger tax base? Yes, we do. So does every other town. But let's make sure we get it. It's not that easy. Things always look good on the surface, but sometimes you bite into it, and it tastes like crap. <laughs> well, that's true. And obviously, CJ, I mean, uh, people will say, well, you're not, you're not taking a position, you're not committal, and, you know, obviously that's, that's fine. I obviously have said without, with any hesitation, I am pro-casino. However, I am not pro-casino in the city of Fall River unless the circumstances are going to benefit the people of Fall River because I can get my car and drive to, drive to Twin Rivers, or I can go to Atlantic City or Foxwoods or Vegas. Uh, the reality is that I don't want to bring something into this community as a resident, as a taxpayer, that actually is going to be a negative. 
if this if this organization comes in and doesn't honor its host agreement if this organization requires us to go to court as legit had to do and spend more of our tax dollars to try to get what we what they supposedly agreed for this is not good for the city and you know that's that's the reality that even people who say look I don't mind having a place I don't mind having 10 restaurants in Fall River or 20 or and be and have a place to go that's closer but the reality is if if it's on our scale and the negatives outweigh the positives if if they can't answer and answer to the satisfaction of every citizen the questions that have been that have arisen through these letters and documents that you've researched you know even people who are pro casino would consider voting no because as i said we live here we pay taxes here and the reality is i want something that will bring jobs and help the taxpayer of fall river i don't want something that's going to cost the taxpayer of fall river and then we don't get what was agreed upon and we have to spend the rest of our lifetime in court you know and and the thing is not only do we want the casino we want it to last we don't want this to be a you know a drop in the pan we don't want this to be here for two three four five years and all of a sudden we're not making any money so we're, we're pulling out we're leaving because then we'll have a big casino empty in the south end of fall river and nothing there um, so you know that's something we have to be aware of as well and I, I really think it's necessary that we get the information we need and to do this in a manner that the city has been unwilling to do or at least the city administration um, so again I've been speaking to the Massachusetts Gaming Commission and we are trying to finalize a meeting here in Fall River for you the viewers and people of Fall River and once we have that date finalized and we're all set to move forward we will have that meeting and we will actually be broadcasting it live from its location and we'll be sure that you can watch it at home or be there present to ask the questions and the Mass Gaming Commission has already agreed because nobody in Fall River asked the Mass Gaming Commission to come down and talk to anybody is that surprising well unfortunately it isn't because uh, it seems that in this community the last thing they want you to do is know all the facts before you vote on anything or before you 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 formulate an opinion and uh, as CJ said we encourage all of you to come in person we would like to see that venue uh, completely full standing room only and everybody that has a question will be able to ask a question and the Massachusetts Gaming Commission are the people to ask no one can explain how the licensing procedure is and what the requirements are better than our gaming commission so they have they want to come down because obviously they want the people of this of this community to understand so by all means when we announce this and hopefully we will get this together please come and get your questions answered it's it's true and it's not that far off that we're going to make the announcement um, I have already negotiated the venue I have uh, negotiated the t TV coverage um, we're just waiting for one more confirmation and once we get that we're going to move forward and um, they are bringing down uh, a reliable knowledgeable source uh, to speak to the people of Fall River and the surrounding communities about what the process is what they are doing what they won't do what they're considering and all we have to do is ask this is not a political event this is not a point to say we're you know here and we're gonna wave no this is a point to get the information to you the people of Fall River Spindle City Straight Talk is here we're gonna get the information out to you whether it be by researching till all hours of the night <laughs> making phone calls paying visits to legislators and city councilors and school committee people and the governor even and getting the information out to you we are a truly credible source of information and I received a nasty message from a person who is going by the names of Jamie Davila 
and Ty Ferguson on Facebook, um, who's actually uh, a gentleman by the name of Odenfeld or Oakenfeld or something to that effect. And um, he creates and wreaks havoc, and he gets the same 20 people, 30 people on as his friends, and he builds these pages in less than 24 hours, and then he starts harassing you. If you get a message from Davila or Ferguson, flag it, block them, report them to Facebook. Don't take the baloney from them. It's not worth it. If you want to have a civil, civil conversation, both Chip and I are always willing to talk to you. And um, I don't know, do you want to make a little commentary or should I, real quick? We've got, we've only got a few more minutes left. Uh, well, I'll make a quick one and you can make a quick one. We can, we can share this commentary. Well, I've, I've been talking so much. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, uh, well, I'll take it over. Okay, um, listen, uh, we have said time and time again, ask, ask the question why get the information cj and i go to meetings we go to uh we go to the city council meetings we 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 research we we look at documents we we do the work because we want to present accurate and factual material to you we don't make these things up people may not like what we say but we can prove what we say and if it's not factual we will say this is something that we have heard but normally we have documentation as we have here today so I encourage all of you to number one get involved you know do not wait till this community is completely underwater before you begin to swim you, we need to be part of the solution not the problem and the only way we can do that is to get together as a community ask the right questions and demand that our political representatives work in the best interest of the community and the citizens we have to stop this madness we have to stop city councilors working in collusion with the administration to push through bond issues with no reasonable explanation as to why we need to do this. We need to act together because united we will stand, divided we will fall. We have to take back Fall River and the revolution has to begin today. And I think it has, I think it has, Chip. Well, thank you for watching and uh, as you may have noticed, we're doing twice a week and it looks like we're gonna be doing that on a regular basis. So. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and let us hear about your comments. This is Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And we have a great time with you. You have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you.